first non-European pope in a thousand years. In a thousand years, okay. So maybe you could explain a little bit about what what that process is like and and why it's <coughs> why it's only you know it's only the the cardinals that okay that elect a pope and and now what this means going forward what what's the process now going forward okay right well uh the catholic church has 1.2 billion members so this means uh that an election of all church members of the Pope is sheerly impossible, right? It's a sheer impossibility. So, um, the system which has evolved over the centuries, it goes back very far to the 4th, 5th century, yeah? mm -hmm. was that um, the Pope, or earlier it was the people of Rome, elected electors. Same as in the States where you have a group of electors who elect the president. It's not the people, uh, but it's a group of... I forget the name of what you call them, the the, the electors. I the electorate, yeah. yeah. So, um, now, these, uh, now we have 120 cardinals, and in the election of Pope Francis, there were 115, because others had become ill or had asked not to participate. And... Um, of course, it's all very secret because uh, otherwise the pressure would be very strong on them and they would be held responsible for the election which they uh, f tried to discover in the light of prayer and the light of the Holy Spirit who could be the right person. And um, now I think it's important to understand the, that, that in Catholic faith, the Pope is not Lord over our faith. He is not the representative of God in the sense that he can change revelation or change the faith. That's impossible. Sometimes people have a very, very exaggerated uh, 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 imagination of what the Pope can do. The Pope uh, is, what Jesus said to Peter was, confirm your brothers in the faith. That is what the Pope is supposed to do. Confirm us in what we already believe. He cannot change the Christian faith. He can uh, guide the way the Christian faith in the Catholic Church is presented up to a certain degree because uh, theologians are very important in the way the faith is formulated. We, we have these big ecumenical assemblies which we call councils. Ecumenical councils where representatives of the other churches participate. They, they, they listen, they participate. Um, so, um, uh, this is, I think, the, uh, the important thing which we also saw in, say, in, in Pope Francis when he was elected. He stepped out into the balcony and he presented himself as Bishop of Rome. Not as the CEO of Church Global and Company, but as as the Bishop of Rome who presides in charity. And then, the first thing he did was he prayed. He prayed, that's the first time a Pope did that, as far as I know. He didn't um, just wave or cheer, but he prayed for Pope Benedict. Then he knelt down before the people and bowed his head and said, before I bless you, I want you, the people, to bless me and pray for me because I need God's strength. And then he stood up and blessed the, the people. So he's known for being uh, concerned for the poor. He sold the Archbishop's Palace in Buenos Aires to move into a flat. He takes the bus, or he took the bus, now he won't be able to take the bus anymore. Um, and he's, uh, he stood up against uh, um, abuse by government. He's uh, been outspoken on the need of priests to repent when they have done things wrong and to do so publicly. Um, he's opposed gay marriage. So I think he... Um, well, we don't know how he will be, but um, I think he's, he has a good starting point. Yeah.